Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Jessica Sandoval at the Campaign for Youth Justice, and you are um, signed in to promote your Youth Justice um, Action Month through social media. Happy to have you all on board, and we have a great webinar lined up for you today. Today with us, we have Brian Evans. Brian Evans is the Campaign for Youth Director of State Campaign, and we have April Palmer, who is the director here at the Campaign for Youth Justice and Communications. The uh, presentation that they will be giving today will be talking about Youth Justice Awareness Month, what you all can do to promote your uh, events that you're having. And throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the chat box and um, we can ask the presentation pres presenters questions uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, who's going to start us off to talk about YJAM, which is just starting uh, in two weeks from now. So I'm going to hand it over, Brian. It's two weeks. Right. Wow. Uh, well, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, as Jessica mentioned, my name is Brian Evans. I'm the state campaigns director for campaign for youth justice on the first slide you see my email b evans uh, and my phone number please feel free to email me or call me at any time about uh, any of this so just a brief overview of yjam for those of you who may be less familiar uh, youth justin uh, youth justice action month is what we're calling it this year historically it has been called youth justice awareness month uh, started in 2008 with uh, one 5K run in Missouri, and it's grown uh, every year into uh, something uh, bigger and better, covering more states, more events, and really more issues within the giant youth justice framework. So last year, we had uh, events, around 70 events, in I believe 23 states plus D.C., we're hoping to have more than that this year, and we're hoping that you all can help us achieve that goal. I, I think the more uh, events we have, the, the more momentum we continue to build on this issue. Uh, last year, for the first time, we had actual proclamations, official government proclamations declaring October to be Youth Justice Awareness Month, including from uh, Republican governors in Michigan and Utah, and of course, President Obama's very long uh, Youth Justice Awareness Month declaration, which we are working to repeat again this year, but we'll see. We're, we're trying. Um, there's what they look like with their uh, fancy seals, Michigan, uh, Utah, and uh, the President's uh, proclamation. We're hoping to see more of those this year from places large and small. So this year for YJAM, we are we've sort of decided to pick a few days to really focus on different aspects of youth justice. So for example, early in October, there will be a day for girls. Uh, we're working with Rights for Girls on that. A day to focus on LGBTQ youth, working with the Movement Advancement Project on that. Um, in the middle of the month, uh, there will be a report coming out on the right of young people to legal counsel, which believe it or not, is not a right that is always respected around the country. And around the 21st of October, there's going to be a report coming out from the Department of Justice on closing youth prisons. And April and I just today were talking about also uh, having a day for the issue of raising the age uh, of juvenile court jurisdiction to 18. We were talking about having a raise the age day on October 18th. Uh, we haven't really done more than say, hey, that's a good idea. But uh, stay tuned. We might we might try to promote uh, that particular issue, which has gotten so much momentum over the past few years, we want to just push that harder and harder. Um, and also, obviously, we all are painfully aware that this is an election year. And uh, because of that, we are looking very hard at Prop 57, one of uh, like a dozen California ballot initiatives. Uh, this one, among other things, will end the power of prosecutors to direct file youth into adult court. It's very important. California, obviously, the largest state in the country. Uh, this would affect a whole lot of kids in a very positive way. So we are going to work very hard to push uh, support for this ballot, get out the vote, 
Uh, if you are in California, or if you know anybody in California, make sure that they get involved on this. It's, it's uh, going to be a really big step for us on the issue of prosecutors having the power to direct file children. Um, we may also write something about prosecutors facing election. It's you know it's not the presidential election, it's not the Senate, uh, but these are very important elections that affect a lot of young people. So we may also do some focus on that uh, towards the end of the month. Uh, as Jessica mentioned, we are now calling things Youth Justice Action Month. This is because we've just seen so much uh, success legislatively and so much more action in communities. It, we think that awareness doesn't that accurately capture what's actually going on. Uh, people are really taking action on this issue. So we are trying to transition this year into calling things Youth Justice Action Month. Our ideal, of course, for an ideal event is that you would both educate your audience and then give them a call to action. That's really the best kind of event you can have. Uh, so awareness and action go hand in hand, and, and we're obviously willing to help uh, with whatever you all are planning. Um, here's a, a sh very short list of how we can help. Uh, obviously, we will promote your events on our website. That's the website, cfrj.org slash YJAM. That's how you get to the YJAM stuff. It's nice and short. Uh, we have swag. Those of you who've done this before know about our swag. Uh, we can create fact sheets and handouts, and we can create targeted media lists uh, for you to help promote your event through the old-fashioned uh, non-social media. Um, if you don't see something else, uh, certainly feel free to ask. Um, and with that, I will turn things over to April to go more in depth about the social media way of uh, promoting your events. And please let me know if you have any questions, either now or afterwards. Thank you, Brian. Um, yes, definitely. Uh, we are excited about YJAM, and obviously one of the ways that we are using YJAM is to, as Brian said, promote awareness, um, have action, and we love to get media exposure out of it because it helps more people become familiar with this issue. So definitely the campaign is here to support you in any way. Um, we have plenty of tools. Um, sample press releases, talking points, memes that we're happy to share with you to help you pr promote your event. I'm just going to go over a few things today that can be helpful as far as how to promote your event and, and um, where to start. And definitely YJAM is only if, um, starting in, 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 in a few weeks. So right now it's time to, what to do first is thinking about how to publicize your event. And that really depends on, you definitely know your audience best um, and who you're promoting to. That may be flyers. It may be social media, and maybe maybe you have an email list. So just start thinking about how you can promote your event to your audience. Then. Um before your event, definitely um, we've had a plenty of events across the country in the past that media has been very interested in, and CFYJ is more than helpful, um, help, um, happy to help you put together media lists, media advisories, all those good things. We'll go into that more in, in a few minutes. And then definitely a few days before the event, it's just time to re-engage the media, follow up, think about how you're going to get photos for your event and how you're going to um, totally cover your event for social media. So we'll discuss that in a moment more in depth. And then, of course, there's also just some post-event things to think about. Um, some some media outlets will definitely um, post a picture or perhaps run your press release. So you want to think about if a media outlet cannot come to your event, how is it possible for you to capture some things during the event to give to them to make sure or to see if they're able to um, put it in their publication or put it on their website and um, covering cover it, cover it. So just in thinking about what to do first, um, Again, if we're looking to have media at your event, media is very um, interested in what is the hook. What can, why would I come cover this? Besides it just being YJAM and your event is awesome, we definitely have seen events in the past that try to have keynote speakers or maybe uh, um, a formerly impacted youth that have been through this um, through the system that can talk about their own personal experience. That's a local person. So those are all things that might be of interest um, to the media that we try to encourage. Um, um, people to have at, at their events. And definitely our um, initial outreach, goal, outreach goals are earned media versus paid media, and earned media um, is an orange. We offer, also refer to it as free media. It's definitely um, more advantageous to have a, a, 
or Porter will come and cover your event and get it for free, of course, as opposed to um, there are some things that can be done with paid media, especially as far as paid social media ads and things of that nature that don't cost a lot of money, but we'll go into that in a second. And then, of course, you want to use the media to reach people and get attendance up and making sure that people in, in um, the area are seeing your event and maybe want to come out and um, – support your event. And I have a note here about speaking of free media, just consider how you can um, get things donated. Maybe there's a, a student volunteer, a student designer, or maybe a student photographer that, that can take pictures for your event. They, they, they can give you a very professional look for your promotions. Just always thinking outside the box about how you can promote your event and do it um, on a shoestring and not have to spend a lot of money to get things done. There's also some tools you can use yourself that are free that will go through um, towards the end of the presentation. Um, as far as promotion, there, it just runs the gamut. Definitely, we've seen flyers and palm cards are very, very effective. If you're going to be out and about, you can have them in your hand and hand to people and ask them to come to your event. Um, uh, sometimes it's easy to do um, a website or maybe if, you've, if you already have one, maybe adding a section to your website or maybe your event even warrants making um a free or cheap Wix site or something like that to definitely help you promote your event. And obviously social media is great. Our hashtag is um, hashtag YJAM, and we also use hashtag Youth Justice. And obviously um, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram are great. Um, depending on your audience, Snapchat can be great. Um, LinkedIn can even be great. So definitely social media is great. And um, it sometimes can be labor-intensive and time-consuming to do social media. So sometimes people are like, I don't have time for that. We have found it's best to pre-write your um, tweets and your and your posts so that you already have them and that you're not having to think about it each time that you post and that you can um, already have some things to pull from to use. And we'll also talk about some ways you can actually set up or schedule your um, social media so it's not so labor-intensive. Um, event calendars are great. A lot of newspapers, especially um, if you're in a um, market that has um, a, a weekly alternative newspaper, some daily papers still do this. They have an event calendar um, section of upcoming events. That's how a lot of people learn about things when they read those event calendars. So maybe looking at your local papers and seeing if they have one and calling to submit your event could be great. Um, also eBlast, if you're fortunate enough to have eBlast list and you're able to pay out information about your event, that's great as well. And then um, PSAs are still very effective. Um, PSAs are public service announcements. And again, the campaign is happy to help you um, work on these types of things. But um, radio stations will still, if it's for a good cause and it's for a nonprofit organization and it's for public awareness, they will um, sometimes uh, produce a PSA for you to play on the radio for free. Um, that usually requires a little bit more time. Um, they probably want a few weeks before they do that, but it's still a great way to get the news out about your event if you um, still have um, a few weeks to be able to do that and get time um, to do a, a PSA. Um, as you get closer to the event, you definitely want to think about um, your media goals and how you're working to get the media the campaign is definitely helpful um, with making media lists for local newspapers and TV stations. Please just um, give us a call. We'll be happy to make one for you. Um, obviously, every market usually has a major newspaper, uh, alternative weekly papers, and um, you know, four major television stations. I, you know, and sometimes your radio stations will also want to cover something. So um, we find that you know, hitting those um, you know handful of media markets, can, uh, media outlets can be very effective. And we would be happy to show you how to do a media list and. Do a media advisory as well, which pretty much is just talking about who, what, when, where, and why of your event, and that's really what you send them. Um, we also have plenty of draft press releases that we use um, nationally to talk about YJAM, but we definitely have um, template releases that we can um, plug in local information so that you're able to use the, the, the press release locally. And then um, after all of those things are in place, it's really about getting on the phone and emailing and asking media, you know, are they interested in covering um, your event? Um, definitely when you're two weeks out, we encourage a steady flow of social media content. We found um, with our events, it's really helpful to perhaps do something like a Facebook um, event um, um, invite to so your friends can see that you're having an event and perhaps just, you know, click on the link and find out more about it and say yes, they're coming. 
and also we found very effective, which were able to help with um, draft language for our letters to the editor and op-eds for your local newspaper that can help bring awareness about YJAM and, you know, why, we're, why, why we were doing these, these events. Um, this is an example of um, Tracy McLeod, one of our spokespeople in Missouri, who put together an event. Um, she did a bike ride, and this is like a perfect headline. This is from the major paper in her area, and, you know, the headline, Bike Ride Raises Awareness About Minors Placing the Adult Justice System. That is, like, perfect. It's win-win for her event, for her organization, and this is the, our goal in what we're doing with our, our media coverage. Um, I just want to talk about photos for a minute. I'm <laughs> just showing some examples. Um, you, you know, if, if you're not fortunate enough to have a professional photographer and you are looking for perhaps a, the paper or a news outlet to run your photo after the event, we definitely encourage a, um, action shots. You know, I know it's um, most of us are just creatures of habit and we usually get the picture of, um, you know, people smiling and standing there. But definitely if you're having something that has some action or someone speaking or something happening, obviously the picture on the right would be um, much more effective for and, and, and have more um, likelihood of getting placed if it's going to be a better photo. Those are the kind of photos that we're looking for for YJAM. Um, just wanted to go back to the day of the event, which is just when you're done all your prep work and you're ready for the event, um, definitely have your press release handy, maybe with some quotes from yourself or the other organizers or leaders that talking about why jam and why it's important, making sure that you're capturing plenty of, of videos um, and photos and making sure that they're, they're good they're good photos. Um, definitely if you expect media at your event, you want someone to be able to greet them and be able to um, make sure the media is okay and has what they need and can find who they need to find during the event. And definitely um, you want to make sure that you have a designated spokesperson that will be the person that will, will speak on behalf of the event or the organization um, for the for your event. And definitely, uh, but people that can't um, be there, make them jealous. Post the pictures and, and video on social media and show everybody what you've done and how and how great it was. Um, there's still there's still also some event follow up. You definitely, if you did have reporters there, you want to look for the coverage um, that they, they that they did, make sure that it was accurate and they captured it correctly. Um, again, that media follow up. If you were fortunate enough to get pictures that you want to send to the media, you might want to send a quick note and say, "Hey, I know you couldn't make it, but here are some photos in case you wanted to run them." That's totally okay. Um, even social media coverage. Hopefully, at your event. There are more people uh, tweeting and using social media besides you. Like, search for the hashtag and, and go and find it and see how many people were talking about your event. And then um, we love to see your coverage. Please, please, please send it to us because um, this was really great that we were able to do this whole month and generate all this press coverage. Um, just some tools you can use to help make your life easier, since I know we all have lots of time <laughs> to do social media. Um, memes and infographics are very important. I know some people are like, oh, man, I'm not a designer. I can't, I can't do things like this. Um, the, the first, the top one is design. Someone did design that for us. It's very, very nice. It was a, um, a, a Facebook cover banner. But the second one on the bottom, Keep Calm and Why Jam On, we designed. And there's some great, just easy, free tools that are almost just, um, just very intuitive and don't require much design design skill that you can use to make really, really good, um, high-quality graphics. One of them is called Canva.com, that's C-A-N-V-A, -A, like canvas without an S, and it is a free tool. You can log on, and it's great. You can pick what dimension or size you're trying to make, whether it's a Twitter um, header or a social media post for Instagram or a Facebook cover. And then there's plenty of design options and samples for you to choose from. And then you can kind of change the text or pictures to be what you want to be, and it's kind of already laid out for you. And we found it to be a wonderful tool. We like it a lot. Um, there's also a really, really great app called Word Swag app. You, you have to use it on your phone, but the image on the, on, the, on the right is what it makes. It just kind of, you know, takes whatever text you want to use and makes it look really, really cool. Uh, we found that people tend to click on links and look at things on social media that have a visual element. So all of these things, Canva and Word Swag, help you um, create that easily. So you're not having to, you know, have to understand InDesign or Photoshop or Illustrator to make, to make a graphic. Um, 
the, uh, also a problem with the social media is people say they don't, they don't have time for it, and um, definitely encourage the use of things like Hootsuite or another one is called TweetDeck or even um, – and Facebook, you can, you can schedule posts. These are softwares that help you put it in there and forget about it. You're able to just have steady flow of um, social media posts without you having to actually physically do it at, at that time. So that is great if you know that you're going to have an event in two weeks and let's say you want to post three or four times a week about your event to help drum, up, help drum up interest, you can time it out over those next two weeks with different graphics, you know, different links, or, you know, even with the same um, text and it will keep just um, emailing itself out so you don't have to actually push the button. Um, definitely when we're talking about social media, you don't want to forget your hashtags. Again, our hashtag is, is hashtag YJAM. We're throwing some pictures there of um, some hands last year. We, we, we did a social media um, push a hands of support for YJAM, and people took pictures of hands and with a really, really cool visual. So definitely in order to find your post, we want to make sure that you are using, um, we would love for you to use our national hashtag for YJAM, but definitely if you're going to make a hashtag that is germane to your event as well, that would be awesome. Um, how can CFYJ help? Again, we're here to help. We would love to help you make a media list for your event. Um, definitely, we have plenty of talk points, talking points and fact sheets, press releases, op-eds, LTEs, whatever makes you feel comfortable before you talk to the media or if you're looking to write something to submit to the media, we're happy to um, provide you with our templates or help you draft something. Definitely, if you have any tips or questions about social media, um, feel free to give us a call. We'd love to help. Um, and perhaps the simplest thing to do, if you don't have a lot of time for social media or people to do it, just um, we will be on social media all month long. Um, definitely when you see things that we send out, retweet it and share it. You're able to use our memes as well. Download them, download them for yourselves. And then just overall advice. Anything that you need as far as your event, um, feel free to contact us. And I think I'm handing it back to Jessica. I'm going to um, put up my email and phone number as well in case you need anything, but I think it's time for some questions and answers. Thanks, Brian, and thanks, April. Um, great information. We have some questions that are coming through um, on the chat. For those of you who have joined us um, on the webinar today and those of you who've joined us late, you should just know that we have opened up our chat uh, box on the side of your screen for you to submit any questions that you have for our presenters. Um, and we'll take those questions now. Um, one question that has come through, um, maybe Brian, you want to take this. Can You mentioned that there was swag available for people's events. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of swag is available for folks? Sure. Um, those of you who've done events before know about some of these things. We have these orange bracelets. Uh, we all uh, could say, you know, can we do justice, join the movement. Uh, we have magnets. We have post-it notes. We have keychains. We have pens. We have chalk. We'd like, we'd like it if people would get a little old school and get out there and, and chalk up some sidewalks. Sort of a, and then take pictures of it, put it on social media. It's a neat meld of really old style communication and ultra modern communication. Uh, so those are the kind of things we have. We're working on getting some dream koozies as well, but they're not here yet. So if you haven't, uh, if you want those, let me know. Um, but any of those uh, those things we can send you. And April mentioned, you know, things like back sheets and and handouts are also good to have at your events. Thanks, Brian. That sounds great. Um, we have another question that has come through, and April, I'm going to uh, toss this one over to you. Um, someone uh, on the line is planning to have a film screening, and they want to have journalists come and out and cover it, and they want to know how they make this event marketable to journalists. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy to discuss this with you further offline, but um, what I would do is I um, journalists love 
uh, trends and things that are part of larger things. So I would, in my pitch to the journalists, I would explain this is a National Awareness Month, a National Action Month. There are, you know, events across the country, and we are just one of them to highlight this issue and how it, and how it's happening here. And when he came, I'd be able to have people that spoke about locally what what that means. So I think um, to make it remarkable to a journalist is definitely letting it, like, taking it high level and saying, hey, we're one small piece of this national, you know, movement, and here's how this is impacting our community. I think would be of interest to a journalist. And then we could, of course, help you um, with, you know, national facts and figures and definitely help you um, provide some 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 stats for your state, so that's able they're able to pick, make the tie between national and what's going on locally. Yeah, and I, can I add to that? I I think if if you have someone who's doing a Q and A after the film or leading a discussion, uh, if you have somebody there who's directly affected by the issue, that would be interesting for journalists to talk to, or who's working on a policy debate that's going on in your city or your state right now. I think that that's very attractive to the media that this person is out there talking about this stuff that everybody's talking about. So who you invite to participate in the QA might might help uh, determine you know whether what kind of media you can get. And if you're in uh, a town that has you know that where people really like film, that you know maybe you just get sort of in addition to journalists covering juvenile justice, you might get journalists who are just interested in film or the arts and, and could sort of cover it from that angle and you could get your story out that way too. That's great advice, Brian. Um, another question for you all um, is for people who are doing events, should they consider um, engaging the media? Um, I think totally, but I just think if you are going to engage the media, um, like some of the things that we discussed, just to be sure that you are um, prepared for the media. Um, again, if, if they show up, that they're not, you know, walking around, don't know what to do, who to talk to. Um, definitely, if you have any um, uh, paper or anything to give them, whether it's a, a palm card or a flyer that just kind of summarizes the issue and just talks about why this, this event or month is important. Um, yes. I totally think it's great to engage the media, which want to make sure that you're prepared for them. I would say so, that, uh, just to follow right. up to that, April. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, sorry, I didn't know if my mic was on or not. Um, yeah, I would say that a lot, of, a lot of people who are doing events now will be working on legislative campaigns in January. So this is a really good opportunity to sort of uh, establish or, or bulk up your relationships with journalists. So it, it, in addition to covering your event itself, just, you know, becoming, making, uh, I don't want to say friends, but becoming, uh, having a better relationship with the reporters in your area when you have your sights set on campaigning more uh, starting next year, I think is it's another good reason to contact the media about your event. No, that's that's a great suggestion too. I was gonna follow up with April to ask when um, when people do have uh, media folks come to their events, should they always have a sign in for the press or some kind of press table available? Um, I think if you're anticipating a lot a lot of media, of course. But um, I think for most of our events, we probably aren't. We're probably, um, you know, maybe expecting one or two. And I think it's fine to make sure that as long as they're properly greeted um, and that someone's looking out for them, I always ask them for their business card when they come, so I make sure that I have it. I know how to reach them afterwards and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I don't know unless you expect, you know, probably more than um, four or five press that a check-in table would be needed unless you just have a lot of extra volunteers <laughs> and want them to work the check-in table. I know sometimes we have limited resource and bodies, um, so I would just make sure that the mm -hmm. press would properly greet them when they arrived. That sounds great. Um, we are into our last um, 
minute here, so I want to allow our participants to ask any other questions, uh, please do so by submitting your question in the chat box. Otherwise, if I don't see any other questions come through, um, I am going to thank our uh, presenters today, both Brian and April here at the Campaign for Youth Justice. And um, I want to thank all of our participants for listening in and um, joining in to this conversation, but also for those of all of you out there who are going to be hosting Youth Justice uh, Action events this year, we thank you. Uh, remember, you can always call us for assistance um, on this topic or others if you want or have specific needs not addressed by today's presentation. Uh, again, please feel free to contact us here at the campaign. Our contact information is listed on our website at www.cfyj.org. And it doesn't look like we have any, um, any other questions. Um, for this uh, webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off and thank you all for joining us today. Cool. Thank you.